Oh my goodness, y'all, are you in for a treat today? I can't wait to share with you today's video. It is part of a Christmas in July collaboration with the theme Alice in Wonderland. And I'll tell you more about that in just a bit. But my twist is Alice in Winter Wonderland. And I can't wait to show you what I have created. My video is just a little bit different today where I usually show you my DIYs as I'm doing them. I'm going to wait and show it to you all at the end where I put it all together. Now, with that being said, let's get started. So of course we've got to have some teacups. This is Alice in Wonderland after all. So I'm going to use these little adorable teacups that I found at my local thrift store. And I'm going to use this sheet of tissue paper and then I'm going to just tear it into little small pieces. I thought I would use the white and blue roses as a play on the white and red roses from Alice in Wonderland. And then I'm just going to decoupage them to my cup. Y'all, isn't this tissue just beautiful? I love this. I think it is just so gorgeous. And this was sent to me last year by Tammy at Happiness Created. And we had participated in a tissue challenge that's hosted, I believe it's quarterly, by Lisa over at Lovin's the Life. And I'll list both of their channels down in the description box. But I do know that I have recently saw this same tissue paper at my local Dollar Tree. So if you're as in love with this as I am, go check out your local Dollar Tree and hopefully they'll have some. As I mentioned earlier, this video is part of a Christmas in July Alice in Wonderland collaboration and it's hosted by Annie at Indiana Jones and Antoinette at Antoinette Decorating and I'll have their channels listed down in the description box along with the playlist and pinned in that first comment so please make sure after you get through watching my video you go and show everyone some love I promise you you will get so very inspired if you're here from the playlist a great big welcome thank you for stopping by I hope you'll become a part of my family I'm like 10 people from reaching 1500 so if you're not subscribed what are you waiting for hit that subscribe button and if you're one of my subscribers, thank you so much for returning and supporting my channel. I truly appreciate it. As you can see, I'm just continuing to place little pieces of the tissue around my teacup, just wherever it makes me happy. There's no rhyme or reason. And I'm using the plastic wrap to just help smooth it out and get all the air bubbles out and if there's any excess Mod Podge up under the tissue and then I'm going back over it again with my brush and then just adding another layer of Mod Podge on top. I think they just turned out so stinking cute. I know I usually showcase them at the end of each DIY but I'm going to be putting these all together in a winter wonderland scene so I will show you everything at the end of the video so make sure you stay tuned. This little tray came from Hobby Lobby and as you can see I got it on clearance for very cheap so I'm going to go ahead and give it two coats of Waverly chalk paint in white and then I will explain to you what we're going to do with this little tray. Once the tray was dry, I'm just going to go ahead and add a layer of Mod Podge and then we're just going to add the napkin on top. And I thought since I'm using so much blue in this Alice in Winter Wonderland, I wanted a little bit of a contrast. So I'm going with this beautiful napkin and this came from Amazon and I will link it down below. I'm just going to line my napkin up as best I can on top of the tray. And I don't want any of that outer black border, I just want the squares. And I'm just going to use my saran wrap and go around and press out from the center and just remove any air bubbles or excess Mod Podge. But I will tell you one thing, I got a little gung-ho in rubbing and tore my napkin, as you can see right there. But after it dried, I did go back and use just a teeny, teeny bit of ink from Waverly Chalk Paint, let that dry before I went over the top with more Mod Podge. I also used my little finger sander to remove the excess napkin before I move on to the next step. I'm going to 
be using glossy Mod Podge to seal in the top of the napkin. And the reason I'm using glossy instead of matte is because I want my tray to have that glassy or glossy look to it where it will look like glass because we are going to be putting our little teacups on top so I want it to be all nice and shiny. And see, you cannot even see where I made the repair with the ink chalk paint. So let, I put just a teeny bit on there and let it dry. I'm so sorry I didn't record that part. I just completely forgot. But anyway, I let it dry completely before I'm adding this top layer of Mod Podge. And I went ahead and made two more trays, but this time they're round and I just used the exact same process as with the square one. I can't wait for y'all to see how I'm going to use them. For this project, you're going to need some type of cardboard, and I believe this came from one of those calendars from the Dollar Tree, and I've cut down a small piece of it, and I'm just going to give it a layer of Waverly chalk paint in white, and I'm going to do that on front and back. Y'all, this project cost me absolutely nothing. I'm just showing you I painted both sides and then I added a layer of Mod Podge to the front, let that dry. I used Canva to find the image of this pocket watch, but if you don't have access to Canva, you can always just Google free clip art on Google and come up with all types of images. I'm gonna use the iron-on method to attach the cutout to my cardboard and I've just placed a sheet of parchment paper over it and I'm just going around. Usually I like to start in the center and work my way out, but it's so small. I'm just kind of going in circles, making sure I'm hitting all areas of that cutout to reactivate the Mod Podge so it will stick to the cardboard. And when I lift this up, guys, look, my paper is brown. I didn't realize, but I had left my iron on high. I had used it for something else earlier in the day and forgot to turn the heat back down is what I get for rushing, but luckily it did not burn my cutout. And I'm just going to use a combination of my scissors and the X-Acto knife to remove the excess cardboard. While I was looking for the watch or the pocket watch on Canva, I also found this little bottle that says drink me on there. So I just did the exact same thing. I printed it out and I'm just going to repeat the same process as I did with the pocket watch. I thought this little bottle was just so cute and you cannot be free as long as you've got a printer. Because this is cardboard and I want it to have a little more sturdiness to it. I'm gonna give it three coats of the Triple Thick from Deco Art, and I discovered this stuff strictly by accident. I was reading about it on Pinterest, and someone was talking about they put it on cardboard ornaments they make for Christmas, and it, do it doesn't make them as rock hard as they were saying, but it does really stiffen them up and makes them hard and inflexible, and it gives them such a beautiful brilliance and just shine. I love it. But the key is not to keep going over the same area. Just apply it and then you can go over it a time or two, but not too much. And then I let it, really I let it dry about 8 or 10 hours and then I go in with the second coat. And I did this on front and back. I just absolutely love how glossy and shiny they look. So we can't have an Alice in Wonderland themed video without a teapot, right? So this little teapot came from the thrift store. I've had it for a while. It's a couple of bucks. Cleaned it up really well, took it outside, and gave it a couple of coats of the Rust-Oleum spray paint in white. And I love this stuff. It gives the best coverage. That and the Ultra Matte are my favorites. And after it dried, see the wonderful coverage? 
I mixed together Waverly chalk paint in the colors ocean and pool and I just kept mixing them together I was going for the color of Alice's dress or as close as I could get now right here it looks pretty darn close but once it dried it was darker but that's okay still really pretty just not quite the color I was going for as you can see and I did give the two the teapot two coats of this um, Waverly chalk paint Whenever I'm painting something like this, I find that this sponge gives much better coverage, but I am using this little teeny tiny brush and just going in and getting all those little nooks and crannies around the handle and the spout. Now I've gone ahead and filled the inside of the teapot with bits and pieces of floral foam that's really seen better days and can't really be used anymore. And this is just a piece of one of those white microfiber towels that you get in the automotive section at Dollar Tree. And I'm just popping it down inside and I'm going to leave some of it sticking up so I want it to look like it's snow. And then as you can see I have a variety of ornaments and pearl beads here. And some of them came from Amazon, some of them I already had and some of them was just left over from last year and the little ornament here i believe that came from michael's last year i got it on clearance but the little clear balls that you'll see me use in just a moment these aren't they adorable these came from amazon and so did the really large pearls and i'll link those down below because this time of year it's just kind of difficult to get a uh, variety of ornaments and as you can see i'm just popping them in here with hot glue. Now I did use just a tiny bit of uh, super glue in a couple of places when I didn't, especially on the clear balls, I didn't want the hot glue to show and I just kind of held it in place. And I, as you can see, I want it to look like the tea has just bubbled all up and then it just froze as it was bubbling up. But anyway, you'll have to tell me if I got there or not. And then we're just adding some more little half pearls to the front and these came from the Dollar General believe it or not because I wanted you to have just a little bit more sparkle and bling. For this project, we're using two of these little wooden blocks from the Dollar Tree, and I've already given them a coat of the Waverly White Chalk Paint. And this is going to be the base for our trees, but I actually only end up using one of the trees. I didn't use the other one. And in between each layer of glue, I'm going to let it dry, and then I'll add another layer on top. And in between each of the layers, I'm going to sprinkle in some glitter because I want it to look like it's a bed of snow y'all in between each of these layers of glue it took so long for it to set up I feel like I should play the Jeopardy music and I'm just going back and adding one final layer on top and I'm kind of going up the stem just to make sure that it's going to hold it in place we're going to be adding this little Cheshire cat to the stand along with the tree and I'm just removing the base, or most of it anyway, that he's on because it's just too big and bulky. And then I'm going to go over what's left with some white chalk paint from Waverly. And this came in a little packet from Amazon, and I'll link it down below. It came with several of the other little figurines, and I thought he was just so cute. I'm going to go ahead and sand off any rough edges before I hot glue him to the stand. I'm just going to continue to add hot glue around the base of the cat until I build it up, make it like a pile of snow, and then I'm just going to add more glitter on top of that. And he is finished, and you'll see him again real soon. We're going to make a frozen pond. And we're going to be using this flexible cutting mat from the Dollar Tree. And you can see I've kind of sketched out the shape of my pond. And I'm going to cut it out. And then I gave it a coat of Waverly White chalk paint to help my acrylic paints adhere to this plastic. And I used Cloudless from Apple Barrel 
and pearl white from folk art and I just pounced it around with a cheap piece of sponge until I got what color I guess you would say that I was looking for and I have no idea what a frozen pond really looks like in real life but anyway this is my version of it and then while it was still damp I just went in with some glitter and sprinkled it before we move on to the next step I'm going to use hot glue to create the frozen pond and I'm just going around the edges of the cutting mat and I'm kind of pushing the hot glue out to the edge and I, this is very sped up. I went very, very slowly as I'm going around in a circle. I just continued going around in circles and each time I just kind of push the hot glue into the other layer, if that makes any sense, because I wanted to make sure there was not any gaps in between each circle or row of hot glue and I think I used about three and a half maybe almost four of these really large glue sticks And of course we have to add more glitter because it's going to be a frozen, sparkly, winter wonderland pond. So now we get to put it all together and we're, our base is going to be this wooden round and I believe this came from Home Goods, maybe Marshall's, but I think Home Goods. And I'm going to place this tray that's going to be the base for my teapot and teacups just so I can get an idea of where I need to place the rest of my DIYs. So my take on the Alice in Wonderland is it's winter time instead of spring and summer and everything is just frozen over and covered in snow and just beautiful and sparkly and icy and the little pot that I placed there, it was actually a terracotta pot. We broke it in half and painted it brown, distressed it with a little bit of white paint to make it like snow and that's going to be the hole that the rabbit is going down. Y'all, I'm so sorry. The SIM card filled up on my camera and stopped recording when we were gluing the teacup and teapot together. But we used the Gorilla Gel glue and a little bit of hot glue to put it all together. And as you can see, we only used one teacup. I'm going to use a piece of tape and hot glue to make our tea fall. Instead of waterfall, it's going to be a tea fall. Because as you can see, by the bubbles and everything coming up out of the teapot, everything is just bubbling over and now it's frozen. And I'm just using a little bit of hot glue to attach the tape inside the spout and just to hold it into place. And then I'm going to bring it on down and use a little more hot glue to attach it to the pond. And then I'm using my big glue gun and I'm just running it along that tape. As you can see, I'm just going up and down and just creating the water tea fall in between each layer of glue and I think I did three I did let it kind of set up and harden just a little bit before I went in with the next layer and can we just do a quick shout out to the honey for helping me hold the teapot just to make sure everything was steady and I wasn't going to mess anything up thank you honey and then we're just going to go in and top it all off with what else? A little more glitter to make everything sparkle. Y'all, I think this is just looking so beautiful. What do you think? And all we have left to do is just to add in a few more little happies. Y'all, I really love this. I think this is just so gorgeous. I hope that you've enjoyed it as well. If you're here from the playlist, thank you so much for coming over. I truly appreciate it. 
If you're one of my returning subscribers, again, thank you. You're appreciated more than you will ever know. Don't forget about the playlist. Please go and visit all these other wonderful ladies that have created some beautiful videos, and I promise you, you will truly be inspired. Thank you all again so much for being here today, and I will see you next time. Bye.